Uh, last but not least, let's talk about the book of Boba Fett. Now that it's right. been um, it's been it's been completed, right? Uh, the, the the book has finally been written. We talked about the first chapter uh, when it premiered uh, late last year. You know, what I mean in our mm-hmm. final episode. Uh, but you know, now now you know the, the the book has been complete, right? And now we could kind of share our thoughts on this book itself, right? So I I will kick things off and then you guys can come in afterwards, right? And I'll give oh, yeah. my rating afterwards. I'll give my rating when I'm done here, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, right? How the the the, the, the one show that came to mind while I was watching this, oddly enough, right? I don't know if you guys have ever um, ever watched um, Spartacus on Stars. Yeah, yeah. Blood and Sand, right? Remember, yeah, remember yeah, when yeah. they 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 casted this guy to play Spartacus, right? And then um, he 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 passed away, unfortunately. Yeah. And then in between, they had the prequel called Gods of the Arena, which was just like this limited series slash mini series, which was just set in the like events before what was going on. And then in the third and fourth, whatever seasons, that's when the the the, the story continues now. So. In a way, this is kind of how I how I see Book of Boba Fett, right? It's meant to be a placeholder of sorts for 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 um for season three of of the Mandalorian. Agree to disagree, right? But at the same time, it this kind of shows that hey, in this world, Boba Fett could meet the Mandalorian, and the Mandalorian can meet Ahsoka, even though Ahsoka doesn't have her own series, right? And uh, I believe it's on the 25th of next month, we're supposed to be getting, uh, no, of me, sorry, we're supposed to be getting um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So it, it just kind of feels like this is Lucasfilm saying, hey, in this TV universe, similar to like what, um, you know, Marvel was doing with Netflix, with, uh, you know, with, uh, with Luke Cage and stuff like that, Hey, in this world, this character could be this character, and that character could be that character, right? So it, it feels like that, right? Um, so for me, for for me personally, I, I thought it was a surprise. It was a surprise for for me. I know it's probably for many as well. With um, chapter five, you know, returning the Mandalorian, right? Uh, yeah. With you know the Mandalorian returning, right? Even though they were hinting at his return at some point in time, right? But still, to have a full episode dedicated to him was interesting and yes i mean bryce the dallas howard knocked it out of the park it is oh, yeah. easily one of the best episodes of the show bar none but there's still a part of me that's like all right but you're kind of diverted from what the story of boba is right and i'm not sure like it's, it's i'm still sort of like half half of it like i do love that episode eh? i do love the, the the following episode which uh featured you know from uh luke, luke skywalker to cub van to, um even right now to cad bean who looks awesome right. in this right yeah. but at the same time i'm still like but this is boba's story then you know what i mean so i'm yep. wondering now right. if, if if it's lucas film saying you know I'm not sure if people like the, the 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 progression of 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 uh, this this Boba story or his character as a whole. So let's have the Mandalorian stuff because people love Mandalorian, right? And we kind of want to see what what up with him and Grogu, right? Which they do, but still at the same time, I felt like it just kind of de- uh, distracted from what was going on with um, with with Boba. And I do like that they they, they met up together, um, but it's just in one episode technically, right? That's the final one, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, I still enjoy this. Um, it's similar to other Disney Plus shows. This is one that is best enjoyed when you just watch it as one, like when you just binged out uh, one time. Because I find like, <clears throat> like when you watch it weekly, 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 you kind of go in with expectations pretty high, and then sometimes it met, other times it not. Right, but for me, luckily, I just like just binge the whole season like we recapped it now in preparation for this i think it works best uh better like just watching it play off from episode mm-hmm. one to the very end instead of waiting week after week right um i do like boba fett's progression from bounty hunter to crime more so that i could help but see yep. sort of like a like a colony vibe like a veto colony more veto than michael where it's like yo i don't want to be this tough 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 bad guy who like kills people you know but I will be fair to you, though. But you see them if you cross me, I will get to you. And if I don't get to you, I know people who I could call on that will get to you for me, right? That's that's his movement, and I love that. I felt they could have played a little bit more on the crime boss aspect, a little bit more. But um, 
you know, for what was, you know, it it, it works, right? Um, also, I mean, tomorrow, Morrison, I mean, he is Boba Fett for me. He, he oh, just yeah. kills a trout, right? Uh, I also dug the, the, the flashback. So I was making the joke that the Bacta tank was the flashback device that was the flashback hmm. machine, right? But they make it work too. And I really love like like what they were doing in terms of like his his come up. You know, I mean, literally how he came out from of that Salak uh, when he hooked up with the Tuscan readers and all that kind of stuff. He got some great uh, Lawrence of Arabia vibes from it as well too. Oh, yeah. Especially with that uh, second episode, which is still one of my favorite episodes, with them, you know, uh, taking on the train and all that kind of stuff, right? That, that was really dope, right? And I guess it was it was, it was a matter of time before he meets up with um with with the Mandalorian anyway, and you could tell that they, they was trying to set up. Okay, there's a succession thing going on, so Boba is like the old school, and now Mandalorian is like the new school. So it was kind of play with that. Though. I felt they could have done that a little bit more, but whatever, right? Um, but I mean, still, this was just uh, well, well filmed um, across the board. I mean, I, I thought that directing wise, everybody did their thing. Um, some episodes worked better than others, directing wise, but it worked right. And I'll get to directors just just uh, um, in a little bit to wrap things up, right? Um, uh, casting, I mean, everybody came true, do their thing, man. Ming now, when she shined as well, Petro Pascal, of course. Uh, even Tonda Cat makes up her, it's like, what? Yeah. okay, like, they, they, they get here. okay, cool. I mean, um, you know, as this this uh, mod artist basically right I'm still a little iffy on the you know the biker gang basically that show up and you know there's a joke about how flashy the, the bikes are but I like the whole I was making the joke that maybe they are uh, they're like the children of pod racers from like episode one like okay. you know we see like this new generation of Tatooine residents basically but I felt honestly we could have gotten a little bit more out of them like an episode dedicated to them and like why they do what they do right you know um at the end of the day, um, this, this this feels like this like we could have gotten at least one episode just to kind of make things just a fleshings out even more. It it does feel a little rushed though, um, especially with that final episode. Um, I'll talk about that in a bit too. But still, for what they were going for, what they were trying to tell, I think this works right. And clearly, like I say, it's just meant to be part of this bigger TV universe anyway. You know, so it's not like you have to treat this as. Oh well, well in season two, you know me. Let's see what happens. Like I don't think maybe we might guess season two. I don't know, but I still think I just think that this is just meant to be part of this TV universe, and we're gonna get other stories similar to this anyway, where they just tell its story and it just moves on to another character and so on, right? Until we eventually get to um to season three of uh Mandalorian, right? And a couple things, couple. Um, Ludwig Göransson, he he kills it again. That team song kicks ass. Oof. I love it. That yeah, you know, I love that, right? I do have one gripe though with the version that they play in the final episode. It did feel like this was like a demo version because you didn't hear yeah, you have fat, and it was just like, all right, it, 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 it's clear this was like a version that that um that that Ludwig was playing around with I just kind of put it in the end because you know the book is done so it's fat you know what I mean but I don't know there's something about here and yeah even though they probably swapped fat for year that's just my nitpick right but I just prefer the original team as opposed to the to the demo version that we hear near the end right I do think the last thing um, the, uh-huh. the, the, the one and I'll get to the, my thoughts on the Mandalorian episodes, but I think the thing they did where they like mixed the Mandalorian theme and the Boba Fett theme in particular was also one of the great yes, highlights. Yes, yes. I thought that was really well done. Yeah, especially those that that those those final moments of that final episode. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Right again, okay. this idea of succession. You know, what I mean, um, is the Mandalorian going to you know fill in the, fill in the shoes of Boba Fett one day? I feel that's what they alluded to with that. Right. And last thing, I'm not going to stay too long in this, though, because I know Tracy has a rant ready for us, right? Oh, yeah. This idea with, oh, Robert Rodriguez. Because, <sighs> look, he, he has directed the most episodes. It's just three of them. Um, well, if, you know, chap, chapter one, chapter three, and the last one, right? Now, I'm not going to call myself the biggest fan of Robert Rodriguez, right? But, I mean, his impact to film is is can't be understated, right? Um I mean, look at Sin City, right? Look at that, right? Oh, yeah. Masterpiece, in my opinion, right? So for 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 certain Star Wars fans to come and say, oh, well, you know, 
chapter 7, the final episode disappointed me because I didn't get what I wanted and I wanted to see Luke Skywalker. I just speculated maybe some people wanted to see him, but it's kind of clear that he wasn't going to be in it, right? I just speculated, right? But y'all making, y'all throwing a hissy fit because of one shot, because one, one of the biker guys do a spin and fire shot, you know what I mean? And yo, oh, this is like the dumbest, goofiest thing ever in the world, right? In an episode that gives us a ranker running wild in the streets, doing a set of, you know, kaiju and and, um, and and King Kong type shit, and a bunch of stuff going on for uh, uh for a spectacular, albeit uh, rushed, um, you know, action sequence. Y'all still trying to hissy fit and see, oh, well, you know, Robert Rodriguez, should, Robert Rodriguez should just stay clear of Star Wars altogether because look at how he ruined it. Um, fuck y'all. That's, that's all I had to say about that, Jen. But for y'all to say that a director ruined a whole show just oh because of the girl, their money's worth, I mean, come now, man. Like, he is doing the, the one thing y'all dream up at nights to do. Ah. Y'all want to be in his shoes, right? So don't get mad. Get glad, right? If you don't want oh, to, yeah. to take shots, take shots of the people behind the scenes. Because even though I'll get to written, the 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 um the the structure of it is admittedly flawed. I mean, blame it on Lucasfilm. Don't don't blame it on the people that they hired to direct the um the the, the episodes. That's all I had to say, right? I'm not saying blame John Favreau or Filoni or whatever. But oh gosh, man, don't take it out on Rodriguez. He is doing what you want to do. Don't get mad at him. Get glad, right? So that's that's my take, and I know you guys will dive in a little bit deeper on this, right? So for me, written wise, I will give this a lighter, decent four to five. No, it's not perfect, right? But it's not the train wreck that people calling it right now. Um, and I guess it's just a matter of expectations and you know whatnot, right? But for me, what would have made it better is if they had just stuck solely on Boba and told its story. And if they really insisted on bringing in the Mandalorian, fine, no problem. But don't let it detract from the Boba Fett story, which is what I felt they did. It, it, it just reeked a little bit of okay, we're not really sure if the fans liking this, so they're just bringing a character that we like and more characters that other people like and maybe people will warm up to it eventually, but not with a character like Boba Fett, not with a character as iconic as Boba Fett. I don't think you should do that, right? But um, in terms of this world, this TV universe where, yeah, characters could just run into each other and then you'll see them probably in other shoes, you know what I mean? Like Ahsoka or... or, um, or um, What's his face? Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. It's a quiet taste. I mean, I'm I wouldn't call myself the biggest Star uh, Star Wars fan, so I'm not geeking out of out of all this. But I like this. I I, I like that we could, we, the, the, you know, Lucasfilm is brave enough to do stuff like this, right? So oh, yeah. you'll see how things play out with that, um, you know, going forward. So uh, Ashton, your your I know I ran for for long. I'm sorry, but yeah, Ashton, your 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 thoughts, if any, on you know Book of Boba Fett. Yo, okay, so my thoughts on Book of Boba Fett. I was enjoying it, and I think people forget that um, Star Wars, the original stuff, was also very campy. Oh, yeah. Still, <laughs> right? And I think people take things too serious. Why can't we have a biker gang with Power Ranger-type colored bikes? Why? why right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right? Why is that so hard to believe? I see people up, driving on um, hundreds that look like that. Yeah, it, it, it yeah. is Spike. It's inspired, to be honest, uh, Ricardo. It, it does it, feel like that. Yeah. Inspiration is inspiration. You know what I mean? Fair but enough, at the enough. end of the day, who's to say that there's not some people in space making space bikes that look like that crazy shit? We don't know. I don't know. Are there even people in space? Who knows? Right. But <laughs> Think about it. I don't, I don't expect things to look like what I expect things to look like, I expect things to look weird. So if it looks weird, that's fine with me. Um, here's my problem with the book of Boba Fett, uh, and you're kind of in, it in what you were saying. Those two episodes that they did with the Mandalorian turned that, that whole thing for me for a horse. Book of the Mandalorian just take long for him to reach, and it yeah. erase everything Boba Fett about the show. Mm. They could have keep going. They could have. The, the backstory of the Tuscan thing, they could have given us more kid Bain episodes, yep. but agreed, agreed, agreed. Oh, yeah, the Mandalorian force for fight Mandalorian Grogu, Luke Skywalker, who had nothing to do with it. Those kind of things you could use as 
tie-ins. Now, this is my problem with most television and cinema. When you have, and the Marvel Universe did it pretty okay, right? But I like when you introduce a character and then you build up the whole team, right? But I like that in TV shows too, right? Introduce a character, you know you have in about seven to nine episodes, you could have built up Fennec Shan so much more. I'm interested yeah. to learn about her. I want to know yeah. about Fennec Shan. You but know she, what I mean? She had some, she had some interest. I, I so love Ming-Na. Yeah, 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 but they didn't really give a damn. I mean, she spent half the episode missing because she running from one area to the next area, so she missing for half the episode and then show up and right. shoot people in the head. You know what I mean? Like, plan your business better. Plan your business better. Man, yeah, you turn the whole book of Boba Fett into the book of the Mandalorian. We start in it just now. There's a primer up for a hey, Mandalorian. Have a next season coming, guys. Look, look, Rogu back. Look, they flying away in a ship. Yeah. They turn the whole thing into the Mandalorian. And stuff like that, my friend, that actually crashed the show for me. Yeah. Because I could have put up with all the other stuff. I could have put up with weird... Um, Graphics and the bikes and all I could put with all that stuff. I could I could make those things sound logical in my head, right? Because I mean the girl had a red robotic hand, right? So clearly they kind of into fashion even with their mods. So why right. wouldn't they be in some kind of style with their bikes? I guess you know what I mean. But I just saying it looked whack. Fennec, the, the scenes with Fennec Shan going through the streets on her speeder that looked terrible too because. Okay. Her speeder flying. And these people on some bikes. And these bikes, well, I mean, they're, they're looking bad, but God, oh, I'm performing bad too now, man. Right. right. So I rate the oh shit. I, yo, I almost called it Mandalorian. Right. <laughs> Boba Fett. Um three best car shoots <laughs> out of seven. <laughs> yeah. Three, three out of That's, seven. I'll put it there. Yeah, like I'll watch it again because I'm a Star Wars nerd. But oh, yeah. like, I, my recommendation to anybody is like it helps to be a Star Wars nerd to watch this. Yes. Yeah, I think the show is designed for Star Wars nerds anyway, and for yeah, that that that's what the show is designed so, for anyway. You know. Spoil and spoiler alert for the listeners: uh, the killing of the marshal really pissed me off, and I like really left a sour taste in my mouth now. Also. Oh, yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was spoiler. Yeah, yeah, I think it was spoiler about that. So, whatever. Yeah. Well, well, look, the deputy I I collect like four shots, shots, right? The deputy collect like four shots, and if you see the the post credit scene, yeah. um, he, yeah, he, he will be back. He will be right. back in some way, shape, or form, right? Yeah. So, so have no fear. So, uh, Ricardo, your your quick and honest thoughts on um this this season here of this yeah. book of Boba Fett? Yeah, it's, it's, it's more like a a couple of chapters of Boba Fett, not really a book pussy. I think. <laughs> It was too. It was too little of it. Felt like him and his arc, and they could have done so much more with this. To be honest, like I didn't, I didn't hate it. I had fun with it, but like, yeah, it was kind of Mandalorian season two point five. Like you have a whole section, a whole episode with just Luke and Grogu. I like with this this Boba Fett boy. What's going on here, boy? Like right. it's it's too much, and it a lot of it just didn't work in that sense. Um, but when it came down to brass tacks in the final episode, I I I enjoyed the final episode for what it was. It was alright. Um, I felt they could have done more with it. I really wanted, like, you know, what I wanted, I wanted like other Tuscan re- readers to come and help out as well in yes. the final battle or something like Same. that. Yeah, whatever. Um, the, the the village came through. That that sorry, the other tongue mouse. Oh, wait, is mouse Esper? Free um, tongue. Free tongue. Right, 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 right. Uh, they yeah, I find they really could have they could have dialed back on the the, the Mando and Grogu stuff. Like, look, we like oh, Grogu, yeah. we like Mando, great. But yes. you don't belong in the show, you know. You gotta, you gotta leave that. You know, we don't need, you don't need them. We'll see them in season three. You know, we'll wait. Yes. But there's too much. Um, I'll say, yeah, Fennec. I thought they could have done some interesting stuff with Fennec because I felt she was cool, but she was the one who was the more utilitarian one. Like remember the part where she wanted to sell the drugs? Still, he's like, yeah, all <laughs> money. And I, I thought they could have, they could have played with that. that but whatever. Like uh, if she and Bobo come comes to loggerheads over. In, in in some future event that'll be cool or something interesting. The story itself, I felt they could have done more with, with the whole him having to engage in statecraft on, on on Tatooine. I thought I could have done more with that, but it was I get what he was trying to do. 
Um, but yeah, everything just felt like just a little too cheap and and half-assed and clearly not as well made as Mandalorian. That final episode in particular is like, you know, you could tell where where the money gets spent and where the money they wear the cheap out. And yes, Robert Rodriguez is really noticeable for his cheaping out. He is a cheapskate. Let's admit that. Uh, he's a good director, but he is a goddamn cheapskate. And he doesn't have <laughs> many moments where you don't want to spend any money. Uh, but they, 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 I enjoyed for what it is. And I, I didn't hate it. So I didn't like, wait, this is real bullshit. Fuck this, nothing. It was just like, all right, they just have a lot of goofiness. And I just felt they could have stitched it together a little better. As I said, the final fight and that whole final clash, I felt they could have done more with that. They could have explained the, I forget the name of the villains. The, 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 Pike of, well, the Pike Syndicate. The Pike Syndicate, thank you. Yeah. I felt they could have done more with them. But then they, they bring in Cat Bane, and I thought he was cool. He looked great live action, by the way. Oh, he does. I, I, yeah, I had, I had no problem with that. And they had, well, I fully understand, to, to have this make a little more sense, you had to watch Clone Wars, and you had yeah, to I was, watch I was literally the extra about, animated stuff. Yeah, go ahead on, Clone. Yeah. I was literally about to say that the Pike Syndicate are very present in Clone Wars. They're right. very present in... Um, Bad Batch, and if I understand right. correctly, they're also there in um, oh goodness, Rebels. Right. Like like the, like the Pike Syndicate are well established in those shows. Right. So if right. you're if you're if you're familiar with those shows, it's not who are these guys. It's oh right. shit, it's the Pike Syndicate. Right. So that's why that's why I wasn't I wasn't too too thing because I just assume that you kind of know them already, and I, I don't think that's right. A, I don't think that's a particularly bad assumption for for Rodriguez and company to make. So I didn't have a big problem with that. So it was like because I kind of familiar with Bad Batch, I kind of familiar with Rebels, I kind of familiar with Clone Wars. Not in any super degree, but just enough to say, okay, I know who they are. Fine, it it in and out. As I yeah. said, if they just didn't make it Mando two point five too much, right, it would have been fine. Because dude, they had literally two whole episodes. With yeah, that's a lot. A, a Boba make a cameo. Like it's like wait, is this Boba show or not? Like. Boba make a cameo, you know. That one whole episode with no Boba whatsoever. A second whole episode where Boba barely shows up. I was like, what was this though? They are, and, and they have the man building, they have they, they have him building with his building a star fighter and all kind of things. It's like, hey, what's going on here? Like, chill out now. Like, give Boba you show, give, give Boba you shine now. Like, yeah. we're gonna we can't see you. We're gonna see you, man, though. Like, whatever. Um, you know, rating uh, six out of ten. I, I really wanted them to do more with this and have it focus a little more on Boba Fett. If you had to bring in Mando, have it be a little more relevant. Like they could have done something like maybe, you know, um, Boba want revenge against Luke Skywalker or something like that, so you can make Luke relevant. But like Luke wasn't that relevant in any of this. Oh no! It was just, it was just a relevant casting to make Gogo do something to make a decision that they could have pay off in a Mando series. And it's all that is going on in Boba Fett show. Eh? Like, wait, boy, like, now nah, boy, you're all pressure. But that's, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. Anyway, six out of ten, I really, really wish they didn't have so much Mando stuff and extra stuff in it. Like, keep it on thing, you know, we already do any tattooing stuff. It already, it was already diluted because I felt Mando's show already kind of scratched the itch about a Boba Fett show. So I was like, all right, well, they're going to do something interesting with Boba Fett's arc in particular. And I had a problem with that. And I really felt because you needed to watch Clone Wars and Boba Fett's relationship with Cat Bane to have it work better then it could have flowed a little better for me but as is it i had real problems with it anyway thundercat was cool in it too yeah yeah i didn't expect to see him in the in the in the post credit scene but right. i was like okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right do, do your thing with your with your dragon ball do rag right yeah. um tracy uh yo yeah we had to put you on the spot yeah your your <laughs> quick thoughts on um on book of boba fett Right. Okay. Well, well. Let me uh, put a few random things out there. Um, I feel like, unlike the sequels, which I I still very much um, uh, big fans of, the, the the situation that would have happened with the sequels was, Lucasfilm said, "Come in, directors, and do your thing." But there wasn't like a storyline that was going where we could see, "All right, this is one full story that we will deal with." So JJ does this thing, Ryan does this thing, and then they got rid of Colin. So JJ had to come back and do that kind of stuff. And it was it, you felt the hodgepodgeness there. What I appreciated about Favreau and Foloni is that it, well, especially Favreau. Favreau had come in and had a talk with Lucasfilm, and there was a line as to where things could go and how everyone could be able to play in that sandbox. So you bring in a Fukuyama, you bring in a 
uh, Bryce, uh, uh, Dallas Howard, you bring in, um, you know, any director that wants to play or that they think can play within the sandbox, but this is the established sandbox. So I felt like even the, the, the misstep, and I'm going to go with misstep, even the misstep yes. of having two episodes that are Mando-centric, there was, I feel like there would have been a little bit more of a thorough line in terms of how Favreau and executive producer Kathleen Kennedy, because people still act as if Kathleen Kennedy, but that's another conversation by itself. Right. Um, you know, that's the conversation that would have gone, gone down and then, you know, coming into the show, things happened. Um, I, the things that I liked about it for me, honestly, was like, I remember, you know, growing up when you would watch, um, uh, Xena and, and Hercules would show up or yes. you watch an episode of He-Man and she would just show up and yeah. they would save the day. It's it, so when I saw Mando coming in, for example, that was the kind of vibe that I got out of it. And I thought, yes, Filoni had fun. Favreau had fun. And I am, I am 100% glad that Filoni is able to shine, to be able to move from Acolyte to, from, from George's Acolyte, uh, so to speak, to being able to fully flesh out the way how he sees things, and then now actually getting able to jump into live action. Because for years, a lot of people have been thinking, maybe Filoni doing a live action piece might actually play very nicely in Star Wars. And Star Wars, on the whole, is like Christmas. So I don't necessarily need to see a lot of Star Wars. I mean, I know we're getting a lot. We're getting Kenobi. We're getting Ahsoka having her own series. We're getting yep. all this stuff. Mando um, Season 3. We're getting Mando Season 3. Um, I will agree with you guys in terms of um, the... What, what I what I, I, I refer to this as the kind of like, you know, how Civil War was with the 2.5 Avengers movies. That is that kind of vibe in terms of bringing in uh, Grogu and Mandalorian and sidestepping Boba Fett in his own story. What was hilarious for me is like, I, I you know, there's certain bits of literature um, that for me, like you, you're reading the story and then it veers off into a weird side quest for like a chapter or something. And then you come back and you realize, oh, this was all connected. So that is kind of how I played it out. I call the last episode... Um, Book of Boba Fett, Rogue One, because even uh, down to uh, the young Mod, whose name escapes me, Tra Shash, I think her name was, I can't remember her name. The young Mod, I mean, she reminded me a great deal of uh, that the, the main ro uh, uh, heroine in, in, in Rogue One, whose yes. name escapes Fel me right now. Felicity Jones's character. Yes, there you go. Uh, Jin, Jin Uso. So yeah. there's that. My problem that I that I have is not necessarily with Lucasfilm or the direction. To be quite honest with you, the things that I enjoyed much about the book of Boba Fett turned out to be the things that got everybody off of their rocker. Like, I sat down when the mods first appeared, and I looked at that high fashion, and I said, I need to get somebody to design some kind of clothes like that, because I was very interested in how the mods operated. I really were. Um, and then I started seeing people posting on Twitter talking about this isn't Star Wars because of A, mods, which I find deeply hilarious when you think of the fact that, you know, Vader is 70% modified and, uh, you exactly. know, Luke has a mechanical arm. How dare we think that is only two people in the entire galaxy who has ever been modified? What is to tell us that between the time, the 30-year gap, that Vader was around that led to the third of what that happened with the three films. What makes us think that there aren't going to be an underbelly where people would want to be modified and want to do things to themselves? This could be a thriving business. And what is deeply hilarious to me about this whole thing is that people who follow Star Wars knows of the, the story, the legend, the truth of George having a box of scripts. In the 90s, he had plans to do a whole bunch of TV series that was going to go with it. And then he just parked everything. You were going to get series about the seedy underbelly of Coruscant. You were going to get this whole smugglers scene that was going on. There were so many adaptations into the storyline that is Star Wars, into the universe that is Star Wars, 
we were supposed to be getting all this from Zins, to be honest with you, if George had his way, or if George, you know, if Uncle George pushed it further, I would say, this is the kind of things that would happen. But there is a through line, there is a, a through line, a thorough line, whatever the correct pronunciation through line. is. Yes. The through line of Star Wars scenes that, um, that I've realized. And I just want to very quickly share that through line. George makes, Uncle George makes uh, the special editions where he, you know, the technology goes up the way he wants. And as a director of something that he created, he decided to go in and meddle it. And he builds his special editions. And there was rage. There was a rage. And this was even before Twitter was even a real thing. Because, you know, like walking around Star Wars, people, you hear it. There was rage. Then Uncle George and Dave Filoni decided when they were doing Clone Wars, you know, Clone Wars. Clone Wars? Clone Wars? They were doing Clone Wars. Uh, they gave Anakin between uh, episode two and episode three, Anakin had a girl Padawan. How dare they have this girl Padawan? Anakin oh, never yeah. had a Padawan. That was a particular bit of rage. It's funny to me now that everybody is suddenly like, Ahsoka is the bee's knees because I was there when there was screaming all sorts of things. Yep. Like, fine. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> Uncle George makes Jar Jar, which to this day, forget how we as fans may feel about it. There is a deep hurt that I feel he still carries because to this day, if you watch any recent interview, and, I'm, and I mean, he hasn't done one for a while, but when you ask him, what is his favorite character? absolutely without a doubt says that his favorite character of the entire trilogy of the entire series of six movies that he was involved in is Jar Jar because like he wants to prove a point because what Jar Jar was supposed to be was the equivalent of how C-3PO and, and, and R2-D2 was that comedic that comedic element that sort of brought something to it and he's was really in the corner about Jar Jar everybody made a whole sort of mess then Kathleen was given the reins. He anointed Kathleen Kennedy. And fans would watch her coming in and would hear her talk. And we'd be like, all hail Kathleen Kennedy. And then the merger happened. Luke Skywalker did not show up until the end of The Force Awakens. And Kathleen Kennedy became the worst thing that ever happened. There were a whole bunch of videos on YouTube to tell people why she must resign or why she's going to be fired. And worse yet, why uh, Marvel guy is meant to come in and um, Feige, Feige is meant to come Ke in. Kevin Feige, yeah. yeah. There is a through line that happens here and the problem is yes. the fans. You know, CC sent, sent me something that I, funny enough, sent to, I had, I had sent to, to Matthew as well on Twitter. It's Star Wars fans fighting Star Wars fans while the others are sitting down there watching this whole thing play out. And it is absolutely and 100 percent ridiculous because while we as so-called fans and this is one of those things it's like when someone says you know marvel fans or dc fans are, are, are sending hate mail to critics i sit there thinking i happen to be a marvel fan i happen to be a dc fan i'm not doing that kind of stuff but you're lumped in this group of neanderthals who are legitimately making it worse for the franchise now the fun yes. thing that i noticed is that, you know, my friend, my friend Victoria, for example, she was a peripheral Star Wars person. And after the book of Boba Fett, she said, I need to know things. So I've been kind of shoving audiobooks on her with like Bloodline and all that other stuff because, you know, she can always get to Clone Wars and the Bad Batch. But here are some books, go read it. It is time that I feel we need to move away, and, and I mentioned the idea of Nostalgia Gate with Bel Air, I feel like it is time that we move away from the Nostalgia Gate as much as we can and not necessarily focus, I, and I don't know how to phrase this properly, even though it's here, I, don't, I think we need to stop focusing on Star Wars fans in order to create a Star Wars piece, if that makes any kind of sense. Applause, like, I don't, applause. Like, I, don't, I don't need... And this was the thing that I griped about. I don't need to see Luke doing an, an Empire Strikes Back training montage. I didn't need to see him running through the bamboo no. with a Yoda on his back to give me chills. You know what was the thing that, that, that I was most impressed or wondering what would happen next was when 
um, uh, um, Jennifer Beale's character, Thwip, um, Gaza Thwip or some other thing like that, but basically Jennifer Beale's character. When the mm. sanctuary blowed up, was blown up at the end of the episode by the Pike Syndicate, preparing yes. us for war, I wanted to know what was going to happen next because I have been watching this entire series thinking she's actually the mastermind behind it, being very sly and glorious with her sanctuary, but she's the one behind it. And it just blows up. And I wanted to see more of that. I don't need to see Luke, especially now. Luke would have come in quite handy in Mando season three when Grogu decides to do the same thing Luke did in Empire Strikes Back. Do we see a pattern going on here? He leaves his friends, to, he leaves his training to go help his friends who are in mortal danger. It's the same thing that Grogu does here. I, I just, that part I don't need. It, it's time that we stop trying to feed the need of 40 something year old males because they have a problem and I could even go even further if I wanted to be that kind of person and say 40 something year old Caucasian males because uh -huh. they, you you have a problem with a black guy being a storm uh, 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 a Jedi I'm like really you have a problem with um, because in the books there's actual LGBTQIA representation as opposed to the sequels, which is another joke unto itself. You okay. have a problem with girls and women being at the forefront of Star Wars. You have a problem with a guy who decides to take a stylistic approach to a shooter and spins around. He's a mod character. He's wearing fly ass clothes. If he decides he wants to spin, how hard is that? Now, I there are realistic things that you can be worried about in terms of where um, Boba Fett went, and and I think yes. uh, you guys spoke about it phenomenally because yeah, there was that whole why do we need the Mandalorian? This is the book of Boba Fett, and I was intrigued about. I was really. I will end here. <laughs> I was really thrilled by the idea of giving the quote unquote sand people an actual history and making yes. them people and exploring who they are and that whole you know him being indoctrinated into the tribe and what it means and him going and, and getting revenge for his people this yeah. is a thing that i loved yeah I that, that stuff see, look, you know absolutely so it, it, it was brilliant so give me more of that and i feel like maybe you know lucasfilm lucasfilm is not marvel studios um, and they're certainly not DC or any one of these people. They're still trying to, even after 40, 50 something years, Lucasfilm is still trying to figure out what works in, I feel like Lucasfilm, the closest we could put Lucasfilm's executive is like the way how the broccolis operate with Bond. They want to do great and exciting things. And at the same point in time, no. So Lucasfilm is still trying to figure themselves out. And I will give them the space to figure it out because it means that I can sit down like a kid in a candy store and see Kenobi coming and having a limited edition series 10 years after, you know, the, 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 the barbecue of Anakin Skywalker. So that's my. I'm gonna just drink some water now and relax myself. <laughs> but in terms of a, in terms of a, a rating, I would give it a, a solid eight. Um, I uh, I I liked it. I enjoyed it. I will legitimately go back to it. Um, I, it's a different franchise, admittedly, but it's not like how I feel about Wonder Vision in terms of oh my god, I must watch this every three months. But right. I, you know, I'm. I, that's me in a nutshell. That's end of rant. The good Sir Tracy was able to cover a lot of, especially when it comes to the state of Star Wars fandom right now, that I think that, like, honestly, my, my thoughts exactly. I think I'm going to start with my rating and then explain it because my rating is, is a good 8 out of 10. And I actually think that the thing we're all complaining about in Boba Fett secretly signals what the show is good at. Because... If the rest of the show and the rest of the characterization of Boba Fett up and up to the parts which suddenly becomes the Mandalorian weren't good and intriguing and had our interest, we wouldn't be jarred when it right. switches to the Mandalorian. Right. Exactly. Because up until it switches to the Mandalorian, the show is actually really good. Like the way it it it, it it's very it's it's odd how much it is inspired by The Godfather, especially with the fact that it moves between two timelines where it's showing us it's where we have two where it's picking up from Boba Fett at the end of Mandalorian and then it's showing us how he got to the beginning of the Mandalorian. Like that 
dual timeline switch back and forth as the show progresses is really well done. And mm-hmm. I love the fact that the Tusken Raiders are now actual people. They're not, um, they're not just like, if we're, if we're being honest, the, the Tusken Raiders are kind of the worst parts of stereotypes of indig- like in the original films, they are some of the worst stereotypes about indigenous people, but, but now they're aliens. So it's okay. But this show takes that kind of dubious legacy and it actually makes them into like fully fledged characters. And I feel like like Mandalorian hinted at this in like the first episode of season two with that, but the show gets to expand on it further. And of course, Tamir Warrison kicks ass as Boba Fett. He has, they kind of wrote the show around him in a way that I think is amazing. Um, where I think the show stumbles is it's like, I feel as if, on the one hand, the show is very celebratory of Boba Fett as a character. On the other hand, it feels as if, the yes, you're right, the folks at Lucasfilm lacked a certain level of confidence in him. Yeah. Like, as if they were afraid this character couldn't carry a show entirely on his own. So not only does The Mandalorian show up for two episodes, which, again, those needed to... Like, if you want to have Mandalorian show up, fine. Absolutely great. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the Hercules shows up in Xena moment. But those two full episodes are... A lot, and they should have been the first two episodes of Mandalorian season three, not the not two episodes of the Book of Boba Fett, especially since up until that point, the show is so focused on Boba and it allows us to follow his character and his character development so well that like when they show up, it's 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 jarring because we, we've been so used to following Boba and we've become so attached to Boba as a character that now we're jarred out of it. I think that the show's biggest problem is the fact that it's caught between Lucasfilm has no idea. And they've actually, the, Dis, the Disney era of Lucasfilm has no idea if they are trying to make brand new Star Wars content or if they are trying to make the content that the, that the fans have always wanted. They don't, they, they are trying to make that decision and they're struggling. So like the sequel trilogy is not a bad concept, but I think where the sequel trilogy fails and where it struggles is in its use of legacy characters. Not because I don't think the, like, obviously the way they use Luke in Last Jedi is phenomenal, and I will hold, I'll be, I'll be taking no questions for that point at this time. Um, but the rest of the incorporation of legacy characters is very clumsy and very, like, we put them in because we thought that's what the fans wanted. And this show struggles with that. Like my two biggest problems with the book of Boba Fett come down to incorporating characters that didn't feel like they needed to be there. So Luke Skywalker, I hated the use of Luke. I, I straight up full up and down. It is the use of Luke Skywalker in the book of Boba Boba Fett is one of the weakest elements of the show. And not just because he drags everything to a standstill, not just the fact that he is blatant fan service, but they bring this deep fake AI generated puppet yeah. of Luke Skywalker. Sick of that shit. <laughs> I mean, I look, am... it's, it's, it's good technology, yeah? but holy it's... shit, you need to cut that shit out now, Jim. You need to cut. Like, you, you, you uh, could have de aged Mark Hamill. There was no reason to completely AI generate a. So, my thing is. is... Hiya, hiya, Sebastian. Stan, uh, you don't know. Like, oh, yeah. Or something. Like, uh, like I just want to relax. Uh, I, like, I, 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 so... I, I'm so sick of that shit. Uh. I know. No, I, I, Ghostbusters that... real turned me off of that. Oh, my someone God. Someone said that the great tragedy of Solo is the fact that we are, because that film flopped, we are never going to see classic characters recast ever again. Mm. Because Solo failed. Yes? Yeah, well, see, with, with that technology, yeah. like... Um, you know, face wise, yes, but you know, it's always that mountain. It's always the mountain movies where he's like, yeah, <sighs> but yeah. Anyway, yeah, what? and the fact that his voice is like not even getting Mark Hamill back to even just get in a recording booth, and I would like not even getting Mark Hamill back into a recording booth to record some lines. No, no, we have to like put young Luke Skywalker into a computer generator and like create it with AI. That is the creepiest shit, and it. And it serves no purpose other than blatant fan service. Yeah. And again, I think there, there are some, but also like throwing it in the middle of Book of Boba Fett. Now, there are moments where I think also, yeah, Ahsoka is also only there so that we can like set, we can set her up for um, her spinoff show, like establish where she's going to be before her spinoff show happens. And that's also disappointing. There are moments I think it works. 
the use of Cad Bane is phenomenal. Like, Cad Bane's introduction is one of the best character introductions in any of the live-action shows so far, in my opinion. Because even if you don't know who that character is, and I've actually been watching a couple of React videos on YouTube, and it's funny to see the people, the difference between the people who know who he is and the people who don't. Because the people who know who he is are cheering and going, oh my god, that's Cad Bane. But even the people who don't know who he is are like, oh fuck, who is this guy? This, 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 this is an intimid- like this is an intimidating, menacing character. And it's like, that works so well. But then you just got so much... And here's the problem. My argument and my plea to Lucasfilm, because who knows if they're watching this podcast, listening to this podcast, but my plea to Lucasfilm, stop trying so hard to appeal to the fans. It's not going to work. These fans are not going to be satisfied. Do we all remember that absolutely deranged tweet where this one guy was like, oh my god, Book of Boba Fett is already bullshit. It's rated PG-13. Boba Fett needs to be hard R like the Punisher. And I'm like, calm down. Wow. Calm down. This is this is a show. I, I a have sh- no comment for that. I this is no, a show no. for kids. This is for children. And even if whether or not you want to debate on whether or not Star Wars is exclusively for kids or not, that's a whole other that's a roundtable discussion right there. But there is a sizable family audience, and demanding that Boba Fett, because like, and that and that's what the problem is, right? All of these fans who are the worst of the fan base, and I feel like Star Wars does a pretty great job of modeling toxic fandom in this day and age, and it's pretty bad. But the fans have such bizarre, specific expectations for what they want from Star Wars, you are never going to actually make them happy. So stop trying. You will you will thank yourselves creatively if you just... Because where Book of Boba Fett succeeds are where it's not trying so hard to please the fans and where they actually have confidence in the character that their damn show is about. So, I mean, overall, I really did enjoy the show, and I may even rewatch it. I do... Definitely recommend it. And I think for people who have wanted, people who have wanted, okay, sorry, sane people who have wanted Boba Fett comments since the original trilogy, this is kind of what you've been waiting for. It's really great. Um, but where the show is weak is there are these so many moments where it's clear that they're trying to make the fans happy because they've realized that the fans really like the shows and they're trying to keep it that way. And so you get, and so you get, all these moments, like like kind of lazy MCU, where they're like alluding to other shows happening instead of like how um, I know there's I'm trying to think of like the one Marvel movie that a lot of people complained it was just felt like set up for another Marvel movie because I think like that that's the MCU at its weakest. It just feels like set up for other MCU movies other than about the characters themselves. And with the Ahsoka stuff and with um, all the Mandalorian stuff, that is basically what this that was the show at its weakest, and it's a shame. Because none of this would hurt so much if all the Boba Fett stuff didn't work so well, right? Like, if, if the Boba Fett stuff wasn't great, we wouldn't care that they take time away from him to look at the Mandalorian instead. So, yeah, no, my final rating is 8 out of 10 because this is a, this is a show with some high highs, some unfortunate lows that do not bode well for certain creative decisions the brand might be making going forward with other shows. But overall, it is still a pretty solid entry. Ease, I mean, yes, the weakest of the live action shows so far included, but that's only two seasons of Mandalorian and this. So there's not a lot to compare it to. Yes. We haven't had an absolute train wreck yet. So um, I feel like it's pretty solid could have been better if they were not trying to make the worst of the fan base happy. Which is right, why, to right, be honest with you, I'm kind of worried about Kenobi because Kenobi looks like it could be fun. There are certain things that I I am expecting to see in it, but yes. I know I'm going to have to mute or stay off for the next stay off Twitter or something. Oh yeah, um, and maybe even mute some of my friends to be honest because right. I I know, you know. Fan expectations are going to be ridiculous for Kenobi. And okay, because there are there are fans who've already written the whole series in their head. And if it doesn't, <laughs> and if it doesn't fit that, they're going to be furious. They're going to take to social media and they're going to complain. And the entire Star Wars hashtag is going to be dominated by people hating on this thing. I mean, unless it pulls a Mandalorian and like 
I feel like Mandalorian was that Camelot moment. Like, you know, that never let it be forgot that once there was a spot for one brief shining moment when all Star Wars fans were happy about something. Yeah. Like, and that was the Mandalorian <laughs> season one. <laughs> like, goddamn. I wanted to get back yeah. to that. Yeah, I, I think we all do this. 